be a threat in the playoffs? I'm sure we'll find out. Najin versus Samsung. Picks and bans for game number one. And there's a Yasuo ban coming out against Crown. Interesting. Kalista banned, of course, against Najin. There's a Hecarim ban against Kuve and the Rise. So pretty standard red side bans. But uh, I'm a little bit surprised about the Yasuo. I'm surprised about the Hecarim, too. Now, in Najin's last best of three, they did they did lose to Kuro's Yasuo. Um, that is true. And they lost hard. They're also going to ban the Kogma. I think this is smart against Fury if OQ doesn't want to play it. And while I'm sure that OQ would be a fine Kogma, he really likes to get in the mix. He likes to get down and dirty yeah. with the Vayne, with the Sivir, uh, with the Lucian. He likes to get into the middle of team fights. Indeed, there's an Annie, and the Sivir picked up really fast for Samsung. Yeah, the Annie will be right there for Luna, who's been taking over for Wraith recently, and he's been pretty pretty solid. That has not been bad. We've even seen some Bard picks earlier this season, which is pretty cool. Now, we saw one Leona game the other day, and I it really seems like Leona's a champion that could really start coming back here with the way the, the meta's going. Right, and since we see a lot of these support bans, and bans against primary engaged supports, that yeah. does bring up some questions. And, Interestingly, Najin is going to prioritize the Victor over the Azir, even though they know Crown plays it. Corky actually going to be the pick from OQ, a champion that hasn't really been playing recently. So that is a very interesting draft from Najin. Yeah, and it's not the type of champion that you can really hard carry on too. So we'll see what he's got in mind for this. Especially taking a matchup that isn't good for Corky pre-6 especially with that Annie to get in there and get some stuns down, maybe get some good trades off with the Sivir. Now, the Nidalee being flashed right now, of course, one of Samsung's primary champions, and Kube is actually going to blind pick the Gnar. That is very interesting indeed. Of course, Gnar is definitely a very safe blind pick. He's good in many matchups thanks to his range. Yeah, very true. Malkai would be pretty reasonable for Duke. Yasuo. Yasuo and Hecarim bands are so weird from Najin. Well, you, it, it makes you wonder if they've got something planned for the top lane, but right now it's just looking like a very standard pick. Well, certainly Kuve is a good Hecarim player. That, that's not deniable, but I just don't think Hecarim is that strong anymore. He requires too much time to build into items. Sure, maybe going back to the Thresh, they already have the Maokai to engage if they need to, so they have a little bit more pick potential with the burst from the Corky and the Victor with the Thresh and the lane. You know that that Hecarim ban is especially weird too because Najin wants to put you on things that are very vulnerable in the early game, and Hecarim certainly is. Yeah, especially if you're going to take the Maokai, you do have some nice gank potential there, but they're not going to deal with it. Last lock will be the Azir to the surprise of no one. Yep. Samsung really liking that. I mean, both teams looking like they've got some pretty well-rounded standard compositions for both sides. A little bit more poke from Samsung. And Najin has that quirky. That that does surprise me that that's where they go after the Sivir. I would have expected to see a Lucian mm -hmm. after we saw the Sivir locked in, but OQ obviously just feeling confident that wants to provide more magic damage poke alongside the Victor. I suppose. Yeah, not a lot of good gank uh, avenues for Eve, though, on this Nidalee. Uh, not until Nar hits six. And maybe, I mean, really, bottom lane is the only lane he could feasibly go to before six. And after six, he's going to have some more options with the Nar stun and the Tibbers coming in, as well as the ability to kind of isolate Goon with that Emperor's Divide, but definitely much more attractive ganking in the side lanes from Watch here early. So we'll see if he can make that work, try and get Duke or OQ ahead. Probably going to be a lane swap from Najin because standard lanes for Najin are both bad in top and bottom, 3-6. Right. So I think we'll see Najin attempt that. Seems like it's going to be a pretty quiet early game either way, but who knows, could end up being bloodthirsty after all. I've got my fingers crossed. I'd like to see it. We'll find out who takes the early lead. Najin versus Samsung, game one. And welcome to Summoner's Rift again for our first game of the night. Najin Empire versus Samsung Galaxy. 
And from here on out, you know, if, if you're in playoff contention, every match is really a must win. And it's really a must 2-0 because, like we mentioned earlier, every single spot you can move up in the brackets is one less best of five that you have to play in that playoff gauntlet. And that is so big. It's also not only that for this season. Uh, it's also potentially in terms of points because you're guaranteeing yourself more uh, circuit points True. for the World Championship. So even if you can get one spot up here, it may well mean you also have one less best of five to play when it comes for the Korean qualifier. And especially teams that only have 10 points, like Najin, like KT, these are really, really important. Uh, so the stakes are very high. The teams, I think, really do understand that. And we're going to see some kind of very good matches for the rest of the season. We've got only a couple weeks left now. Yeah, we definitely should. The season is winding down, but the uh, the effort is certainly not going to decrease from any of these teams because even the ones that look kind of one-sided, you know, that means that the team that already is going to the playoffs wants to win it as hard as they can, and the Many losing team maybe wants to mess them up a bit. Yeah, and even for teams like Samsung, of course, they right. don't want to fight in any kind of relegation tournament. So that too. There is extra incentive there. Although I will say that it is unlikely for any team currently in Champions to be relegated, just given the current state of the challenger scene. Mm -hmm. Lots of saplings going down three, actually. Yeah, gonna help watch out with this. I wonder, do you think Duke's just gonna take the little ones in? No, looks like they're just gonna double jungle it. Just double jungle it. And we do see the lane swap coming in as expected. Uh, pretty clear that this was going to be the case. And Goon actually getting some nice harass damage down early. He took his Q at level one. Ah, so you can go in and poke with that and then use the shield to take a couple auto attacks from the Sand Soldiers. Yeah, interesting. Clever. So, uh, yeah, in terms of the challenger scene, for those of you wondering, the reason why it's unlikely that any current team sort of gets relegated is because it would have to happen by an amateur team. And, uh-oh, Pure uh -oh. is pulling a peekaboo. Yeah, he's coming in really early here at level one for him. Crown on the run, very low health. Luna's here. Luna coming up, he's got his stun. Pure is going to reach over the wall for a little bit of auto attack damage as Goon takes a bit himself, too, getting very low. Luna comes in, pops that ignite. Not going to be enough damage onto Goon, but here comes Eve. Pure's got to be a little bit careful here, too. That was a very dangerous moment for Crown, but Samsung able to turn that one around. Good good read there by Luna. Yeah. Uh, because he saw that Crown was pushed so far up into the lane, and they knew that Thresh had just been at their red buff. That was actually very, very good awareness from Luna to save Crown, because Crown was probably dead there if <laughs> Luna hadn't come up. I would say almost certainly, definitely dead yeah. if he had not been there. And that's one of the benefits of having that Andy on your team early. You can roam and be a significant damage threat, significant CC threat if you need to be. Yeah, also very important that Luna took the W at level one. Yep. So had that stun there available for use. So nicely played by Luna. Yeah, unless you're just going to sit in lane, it's probably best to grab that W if you plan on doing any sort of movement around the map. Yep. So as I was saying about, about Korean Challenger, um, the reason why it's unlikely that any of these amateur teams can truly challenge uh, these professional teams is because in Korea, uh, most of the teams have very deep benches, even beyond the players, as we see a gank coming in here. And yeah, they're going to try to take out yeah, yeah, Duke, but no. Just a Continue. Uh, beyond the, the official rosters here in Champions for official substitutes, frequently, you know, teams like CJ have players beyond Helper, Trick, and Max on the bench. They have BDD, and they have players that are not official substitutes yet, but they still have kind of full practice squads. And these sure. practice squads also compete in Challenger. Tried so, to make a play on the Kube there, but no such luck for Watch. So yeah, it, basically these guys are, are already living in these team houses, and that's a much more exciting prospect as an amateur player than trying to scrap it out as an amateur team. So most of the I would say top tier amateur players are already on professional teams, B teams. Yeah. So. I mean, really, it seems like the top teams in Korea here just sort of use the amateur league as sort of like scouting for players they want to add to their practice roster or maybe main yeah. roster. Yeah. So relegation is fairly safe, but you still don't want to go down there. You still don't want to give yourself the chance to get knocked out like that. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of the difference between, uh, I mean, this is all very tangential, but this is kind of the difference between Korea and the West, too, is that these organizations are so well-established that and so well-known here that 
having a like locking teams into the league actually makes sense in Korea mm -hmm. um, from like a franchising perspective rather than really having an up and down system because you already know who the orgs are. So yeah. Luna harassing Pure a little bit as he tries to protect that pink ward. Manages to take out one of the stealth wards of Pure, so a little bit of a trade there, but it works out okay for both sides, really. Yeah, it does. I'm a, I'm a bit surprised that Luna is in the top lane because Nar is a ranged top laner and they could probably punish harder against the Maokai in bottom. But Kube having some problems getting CS here compared to Duke. Duke, especially since Duke is in that 1v1, he actually is able to farm with some saplings and start to move up when it comes to getting some nice pressure down, and they're just gonna change him right over. So Najin has a successful lane swap. OQ surprisingly moving early down to that bottom side, but Fury only has a pickaxe. Yeah, I mean, with that uh, fade for OQ, he could harass him quite a bit. Yeah, usually you don't want to move over till you're kind of six or close to six, so it's a bit, it's a bit it's premature. A, but it's a bit OQ of him to do that. Yeah. Um, with how well, I mean, now Nara's caught up from that last wave, but here we go. Oh, gank on the ground here. They're going to flash ahead. Get, did get him with the play. Got him with the knockup. Nice death sentence to pull him back, and that's first blood going to Goong. Yeah, using three flashes for that, though. Ooh to get both summoners out of Crown. A little bit of a mistake on the play, but they still caught Crown in the end, so Goon with that first blood, and he's going to get rolling early on that victor. It was nicely played at the end, particularly that death sentence follow-up was quite good. Yeah, Pure uh, didn't quite get too much out of the play, so he had that death sentence ready to go right after the flash from Crown, and landed it very well. And here and we go, watch. Luna has to burn his flash in a little bit of trouble. That's another summoner down. For if, Samsung. If he had gotten knocked up right there, he would have had some real trouble because that would have been chained into a flay and a hook from Pure. Right. And considering that gank just went down in the mid lane, it was a little bit iffy for him to be there because they immediately had control over that side of the jungle without Eve there. So questionable, questionable movement, I think, from Luna. But uh, doesn't have to pay for it too much. Yep, back in lane already as we have the dual lane going up against each other here in bot. Eve sneaking up to top lane, but he's going to be seen by awards, so no real worry for Duke here, it looks like. Kube is going to hit six before, or right now, so you'll notice that gank timing happens right as Kube hits six, but he yeah. was seen, so there's not going to be that opportunity, but that's what they wanted. Oh, uh -oh. that's a lot of damage onto Luna. Is he going to get out? Summoner heal used, but Oku still grabs a kill and gets out. Nice synergy for Pure to have that Dark Passage ready to pull him right back. Man, if you're Luna, you cannot walk up like that onto Pure. You don't have a flash anymore, yeah. and the damage was right there once OQ hit six. So oh, here we go, dive. Oh, there's a dive onto Fury. Yeah, they've got Rek'Sai right there, and Fury is not going to make it out. Flashes ahead to try to get the kill onto Pure, but no such luck with that summoner heal from OQ, keeping him nice and healthy. That was a very nice play from Najin. Uh, the immediate follow-up. Now, they're not going to contest the blue buff. They are too low to make that work, but three kills already on the board, and Najin executing some nice dives, good play around the mid lane, and, you know, th a Najin this clean, I don't even know what to think about this, Doha, <laughs> because we haven't seen them look well this good in terms of execution all season. It's the, uh, you know, it's world's time, man. I mean, you've seen the meme. It's world's time, but the thing is, is like once they get to worlds, then what's going to happen? That's, See, that's the main question. The Najin way is to randomly power up before Worlds. I mean, we've seen it We've seen yep. it for many seasons in a row now. Uh, I mean, all the way back to Season 2 when Najin Sword was not the favorite to go to Worlds. It was, in fact, CJ Blaze, but they uh, they were beaten in the gauntlet by, by Najin Sword way back in the day. And at that point, you know, they, they come to Worlds like they do last year, and they had that amazing run to mm -hmm. the Korean qualifiers. They had to win three consecutive best of threes to make it there, taking out Teams like SK Telecom, the KT Arrows, who had just won champions, they were looking red hot. That's the thing, is that for three years in a row, Najin is a team that should not have gone to Worlds and then <laughs> went to Worlds anyway. Three years in a row, same situation. I, I guess my hope this year, Doha, is that if they go to the World Championship, that it's not like last year where they just show up with nothing new, playing exactly yeah. the same thing they did a month previously. Yeah, it would be nice. That was kind of a... Shocking disappointment last year. Although I will say that I think that their 
their individual players, if they were to go this year, are stronger. I mean, uh, basically, like if we consider Zepha compared to OQ, that's like a massive upgrade. Oh yeah, certainly and, night and day. Uh, Duke has a larger champion pool than Save did, and is still a carry top laner. Goong's still here, Watch is still here. I think the only thing they downgraded on really was pure for Gorilla, but yeah. Pure's well, been playing well. well He's Pure's, solid. Pure's still a strong support player. Oh, Ooh, as we see some the crown. And that's a 1v1. Goon just takes him out and casually swag walks away. Wow. Wow, I want to see the start of that one now. We're especially, need a replay. especially since neither player had flash. So Crown, I think, was just trying to scoop him into the turret and then underestimated the amount of damage that Goon was going to be able to do. Yeah. Maybe Eve wasn't quite there yet. It's going to be interesting to see how this worked out. Eve still has flash. Yeah, could have just been an issue with synergy between the jungler and the mid. Could have just been a bad decision by Crown. Nice outplay by Goon either way. And that's a, a big lead for Najin early on. You know, what's what's going to be fun, Doa, is what? that if Najin keeps playing like this, watching Najin versus SK Telecom, which is in the last week of competition. Suddenly is a bit more interesting, isn't right? it? Right? Yeah. <laughs> it really is. I wonder. And a lot of teams have been catching up a little bit to SKT lately. We'll see. Well, well Crown's going to have a tough time in this mid lane now if he hasn't already. Because Goon's going to be able to poke really, really hard with the death ray, with the Q. Here comes Watch. Eve is here already. Eve is already there, yeah. They have no idea that Watch is there. They don't have oh, a Pierce going to flash play. It's a two man, and here comes Watch from behind. You're very, very low. Whoa, but big nice, knock big knockup. Knock yeah, that's right. Rek'Sai doing work. Support goes down, but they did take out Fury. There's a flash from Oku. He missed his rocket, but <laughs> Watch is there to get him with the Prey Seeker. Eve coming in, and Watch just doing a bit of body blocking to keep him safe. No, there's a knockup. They are going in, and that's a triple kill for Watch. <laughs> are you kidding me? What is this Najin team, and what have you done with the other Najin team? That was a very nice play. Now, was there a mistake there? Potentially no teleports coming through despite all of these ganks into the bottom side. Huh, I wonder point. what the the status of that top lane was. Was Kuve worried about going down there with the twisted advance because they were standing very close to each other in the laning phase? Did he perhaps not have the Meganar up? I think the Meganar had just ended when we went back up into the top lane after the fight and bot, and so both players would have been able to knock each other out of the teleports. I think. I think that was the issue there, but yeah. I'm not sure. Either way, it's a big fight here as Pure comes up to top. They want to make a play on to Kube, but he's going to get away with that flash. Either way, a summoner burnt in favor of Najin. Yeah, easy summoner. Just all Pure has to do, use those Boots of Moby, walk into lane, flash gone. Easy. Boots of Moby, huh? Boots of Moby, <laughs> yep. Let's see. Moby Boots, Boots of Moby, whatever you want. The boots of the late 90s electronic artist. <laughs> That's right. Whatever happened to that guy, anyway? I'm sure he's still doing work. I just haven't seen any of it. Out there on the internet somewhere. You gotta wonder. I'm sure there's a VH1 special about it somewhere. Wait, is VH1 even still around? I don't know. We don't live in America, so we I, don't have cable. That's the thing, man. I haven't watched, like, American television for, like, four years now. I haven't watched American... It's been great, by the way. I haven't watched American television for 10 years, because as soon as oh, I, wow. I moved out, of my parents' house and went to college. I just never had a TV or cable ever again. Yeah. I guess that's kind of similar with me, too. I really didn't watch TV after. What do you know? Internet generation, yo. <laughs> that's right. Oh, Goon just keeping the lane nice and pushed up. On to Crown here. I don't think he's done too much damage to that turret yet, but he should start poking away at it fairly soon as Najin moves towards his dragon. And man, the difference between OQ and Fury right now is huge. Pickaxe, Zerker Greaves, and Avarice Blade compared to a completed Trinity Force. There is Ouch. no way that Samsung can fight this. Their best plan is to turtle until the ultra late game because they're so far behind. Uh, Najin's in a big power spike. They have 2-0 on Goom, 2-0-3 on OQ. So Samsung, fortunately for them, they have great wave clear. They have Azir turrets to try and turtle this, but it's still going to be super hard for them. Yeah, I think it will. Especially right when the uh, the Baron spawns, because Najin's in a place where they can easily get that objective or force a fight. 
Well, Nanjin's doing a good job now after taking that dragon of just moving up and taking control of the bottom jungle, too. So, you know, at this point, Samsung really only controls about 25% of the map, and that's slipping away fairly quickly, too. Looks like the mid lane turret's just going to go down. Yeah, Duke is deep in the enemy jungle, too, so they're trying to back off. They don't know where Duke is, and they're scared. Yep. Uh, he could just come in from behind, but, you know, maybe the solution for Najin is Duke is just always brawling with a CC champion with the other top laners, so you don't have to worry about TP. <laughs> no one, point. nobody TPs. If you're, if you're bad at TP, you just want to make sure that the other guy who's pretty good at it can't do it. It's a good, I, I understand, it makes sense. It's like a perverted logic, but it does make sense. When Duke's there, no one <laughs> TPs. Fine, nobody gets to teleport now. If I can't teleport well, you can either. It is amazing that we've seen no TP plays in spite of the fact that there have been multiple skirmishes before 16 minutes. You know, not that Kuve is like the best teleport top laner ever, but still, I mean, Duke just, like you said, probably just isn't allowing it. Oh, watch getting spotted by that ward, but he'll take it out with the sweeping lens. Meanwhile, Tibber's down onto Pure. Oku trying to protect him. Pure getting very, very low. There's the box. He pounces in for the kill. Gonna give one up to Oku, and that's yet another kill for the Najin AD carry. Go. And yep, now the teleport coming down, and Luna in a lot of trouble. Have you seen my bear Tibbers? I could really use him right now. Too bad, he's on cooldown. He's down. dead, Tibbers is dead. <laughs> like Gangplank randomly. <laughs> and Luna on the run. It's the Grand Annie Chase 2015. <laughs> All right, this is getting silly. Who says Annie isn't a mobility champion? There we go, Flash and Watch should be able to finish him off. Oh, he's gonna get it with the rocket. There we go. <laughs> that was a merry little chase. They allowed was. Uh, Crown to actually get some turret damage down, maybe lasting a little bit too long because Kuve also has some free shots at the turret. He didn't use TP to follow that up. There was no point in using TP for him there, but not White going to take down the tower. Here comes the lantern. OQ. Okuve. Hey, he's just been around the entire map at this point. He's still going in. Goong is here too. Yeah, that's right. They really nice. want to pick up here. Wow, nice. nice grab right on the hop with that death sentence. Chaos Storm zones out crown as OQ finishes off the Nar. Oh man. That was a great reaction from Najin because no we saw we saw Crown pull out of the mid lane. Uh, just because he saw them coming, but basically Kuve overcommitted to that top damage, and Najin walked all the way from the blue side jungle of Samsung around the back of the Dragon Pit through the <laughs> mid lane and into the top lane on a murder train, basically through Samsung. Well, we talked about how decisively Najin has been closing out their games lately, and it looks like this one's going to be kind of along the same lines, but. It really is shocking just what? to see how tight Najin looks right now. What what happened? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened. It's an excellent question. All right, well, OQ has a Trinity Force and a Blade of the Rune King at 18 minutes. Typically, we'd see, if you're lucky, a Cutlass at this time alongside the Trinity Force, but he is so damn fed. Yeah. He's ahead in CS, and he's 5-0-3. Yep. That's a, that's a Corky with 80% kill participation as well. That's a, yeah, it's a nice stat. And Pure, man, Pure's plays have been so good this game. Like, even the response, even when he died in bot lane the last time to get the box down to get things locked up enough for Najin to get two kills out of it. Yeah, and coming back to Najin's power, remember, these are losing matchups that they are playing. They got the lane swap, which certainly helped alleviate some of that, but I mean, Azir should be able to poke out the victor at least a little bit early. It's not too bad. And oh. uh oh, Goom, just gonna grab well a choke. Several views, but no follow up. And Kuve sitting under the tower. And of course, Sivir versus Corky pre six. Now they dodged most of that. But Nar versus Maokai, definitely a favorable matchup for Nar being able to harass at range. So uh, it's not like Najin was picking for lane strength here. Yeah. They've done this in spite of maybe having wow. a, a little bit across the board. Yeah, forcing out the. Summoner, he was afraid OQ was just going to go nuts on him. And he certainly could have. Yeah, he already used the blade active, so there was yep. a real possibility there. Very true. Your attempts to throw a grab out. Yeah, I mean, this is not a game that a Corky should have a 5-0-3 stat line at 19 minutes. This is where you'd normally see Corky kind of struggling with the Sivir, but, but it's OQ. It's time to go to Worlds, guys. I mean, Najin has done a very good job at reading the map here, and Duke yep. gonna turn this Ooh. one around right now. He wants to go in, actually. 
Yeah, right back in onto Kube. There's the Arcane Smash. Kube running away. That Meganar is going to run out. Here. Coming over the wall. There's the Death, death Ray. Death Ray. <laughs> have a Death Ray. Death Ray. Death Ray sounds like the grocery store I would like to shop at the least. <laughs> out of all grocery stores. <laughs> Not like Safeway. It's the opposite of That's Safeway. It's unsafe way. Yeah, <laughs> Death Way. It's true. <laughs> Sale on Salmonella. <laughs> Well, I love how Notchin's been playing this out. You look at the, the total package of this game, the vision control that they've been able to get into, the bottom side jungle consistently, um, the pressure they're putting on the map, their ability to create kills, and also just their skirmishing ability, and then the follow-up dives have been so crisp, really. I mean, watch getting that triple kill was impressive, but man, this has just been a great game for, yeah. for Notchin. It really has. Not so great for Samsung, but you know, what do you do? Notchin just came into this with a a will to dominate, and they certainly pulled it off. Duke trying to defend that top lane turret. Looks like Kube should be able to take it out. We'll see yeah. if he pays for it, though. He may actually just get killed. Oku, speaking of killing, Fury flashes, and that is not going to work. Oku with an easy 1v1. Pure wasn't even there. Oku didn't even have to use summoners yeah. to get that kill. That is how far ahead he is right now. Basically, the Sivir, if you get hit by that Blade of the Ruined King proc, you're just done. Yep. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, meanwhile, Samsung was able to get their first turret of the game for what good it's going to do them. Wow. You know, it's not like Samsung is a top team in this league, but I, we saw them go 1-2 against Jenner, and they looked, they looked okay, but they are just getting wrecked. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is what you could classify as a raffle stop. Sure. And Najin too, you know, they're using the Corky Power Spike right now just to, with the Sheen to get the turret damage. They're not being greedy yet and going for that Baron. Instead, they just continue to siege, as well they should. You have a Victor who's ahead. Really hard to deal with that if you're in Azir. Goon can continue just to press, 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 and so can Corky. There's not a great answer to that. Sure, you have good wave clear, but at the same time, it takes, we've seen Faker do this with Victor. It takes multiple people to get this Victor out of lane, even if he's overextended like that, because the damage, the burst is just enormous. Yeah. And I mean, this is a composition that you can do that kind of stuff with any bit, anyway. But the fact that you're getting to do it with a 603 Corky and a 303 Rek'Sai and all that just makes it that much stronger and that much harder for Samsung to do anything about. Yeah, I, I agree. I wish Watch had, Watch had built damage this game. You get a triple kill <laughs> on Rek'Sai early, screw it. Just build Warrior Enchant. It's not something you really plan on getting, but I don't know. Watch kind of has his way of playing each champion. He just does that every game. It's true. He will build the Cinder Hulk Lee Sand, but I think that if you have that much of an early game advantage as a jungler, just use that gold and just sit in the enemy jungle and 1v1 their solo See, laners, you know what I mean? He's, he's scarred by solo queue, though, because you can play Rek'Sai in solo queue, and you can get, like, three or four kills and go damage, and then once the laning phase, phase ends, your team just feeds one by one into the enemy team until they get a big lead, and you're like, oh, if I had been tanky, maybe I could have made a bigger difference. That's what watches that is maybe true. where he's scarred by solo queue. Solo Q Rex eyes have a very different experience, you know? <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. That's so true. Sometimes Rex Eye, you just want to build Ravenous Hydra and wreck people. Yeah, man. Or, or Black Cleaver. You can feed Solo Qs, or uh, you can feed uh, kills to your lane so easy with Rex Eye. But the, it's keeping them from dying later on in the game. That's the, the plight of every jungler, isn't it? Well, I guess Kuve's plan here, given his itemization, is just to sit with a lot of magic resist and a late Randuin's Omen, but he has no armor to deal with OQ, so OQ gets a free QSS out of this. And especially because Eve is not building any tank stats either, which means that they're just not going to have an Aegis this game, which is not great against Corky Victor. <laughs> I mean, this composition, who builds the Aegis? You can't have it on Annie. You need Annie to engage. You need her to have a glory or, or something. Right. Um, you, you think it'd be, it'd have to be Eve if it was going to be anybody. Well, yeah, but. Oh, and Oku okay, just killed Fury again. Oh, my. All it's right. It's not like Fury. Fury is a very mechanical AD carry. We know him. Yeah. He, he's, he has a lot of prowess in the laning phase, and Oku okay, is just destroying him. Yeah, I mean, like we talked about going into this, Fury is genuinely, in, in every sense of the word, the carry of Samsung. He's the one they're relying on, and 
for him to die 1v1 multiple times really speaks, I think, to the strength of Oku, especially when you look at what the champion matchup is. Well, also the fact that Najin did a very good job, especially Watch, of coming down, diving the, the tower and getting the kills onto him early. They right. just outplayed Samsung in that regard in the skirmishing. So, well done. Pretty much. And now the pressure onto the actual inhibitor turrets. Dragging up in a minute 40-ish, so I'm sure Najin is just gonna back off and take that on the way out, but there's just nothing that Samsung can do right now. Where have you been, Najin? This was the team that I always wanted to see this year. I never just got to see before. Sandbag for six months and then go to Worlds, <laughs> you know, the, the Najin way. <laughs> yep, just keep your true power secret, you To know? be fair, it wasn't like that last year. Najin Shield did make the spring finals against <laughs> Samsung Blue, yeah, so they, they were doing okay in the middle. See, this year has just been kind of like Dragon Ball Z for Najin, right? Where the entire year it's been six months of them just going, Run, like powering <laughs> up, and now this last week they finally like hit Super Saiyan, and now they're like Super Najin. Took them, took them long, about the same length it takes in like the actual Dragon Ball Z show, about six months for something like that to happen. Yeah. And it's surprising, and people may think that I'm overhyping them because they have been inconsistent, they have delivered good games, but I can tell you that in these last three games, we've never seen such clean play out of Nod Chen. Wow, that looks easy. Yeah. Unafraid of the aggression. And look at this, it's perfectly safe too. They have wards, Pure is right there in the enemy jungle, right? Uh, cutting off the lane between the mid uh, and the bottom inhibitor turrets, so that was a very smart play to make if you can win that 1v1. While we were watching the replay, OQ actually forced Crown to go back too, just jumping in and doing a decent amount of damage to him. Isn't that blade active on the Azir. But yeah, as for Najin, um, we just have never even seen this good shot calling out of them. The, the map play hasn't been there, but the last couple against Ku in this game, it has definitely noticeably improved. Yeah. And so Dragon number three, taken very smoothly by Najini Empire. What did Samsung do? Oh, wow, that could have been really, really good. Holy Just look cow, at all the damage. That Victor <laughs> damage. If Luna had gotten hooked, he'd be dead right now. Well, uh, Luna is not building Catalyst, so he's going to be squishier than a normal Annie would. Uh, uh, Annie's normally well, pretty we, squishy anyway. Right, but we typically see them going for Righteous Thor, which helps yeah. that. So. It does. Just still kind of hanging out in his lane, and now the focus turns on to Baron for Najin. We'll see if Samsung can do anything to stop them, but I, I kind of doubt it. Man, Eve's spears are just doing nothing at this point. Still just sitting on that Rod of Ages and a Blasting Wand. Yeah, the heals are okay, though. Healing for about 300 right now, we saw onto that Annie, so that is helpful when you're dealing with so much Death Ray and Rocket Spam in your face. So Duke looks like he is going to go back and just keep matching this Gnar. Kuve's has been powering up though, at least he has some armor now to deal with OQ, but he's still a step behind OQ, managing to complete that last Whisper in time. Interestingly, OQ just decides not to even to upgrade his boots this game. He just wants to duel people with his auto attacks and go all in instead of focus on the magic penetration because he knows he's so far ahead in terms of even AD on the Sivir who only has the Infinity Edge and the Shiv. Yeah, why not? I mean, at this point, finishing your boots would actually kind of put a little bit of a delay in your strength. Yeah, and honestly, because he already has the QSS, maybe he just goes for Berserker Greaves this game, which is unusual on Corky, but definitely a viable in this scenario. See it? Well, Naja pushing into the top jungle now. He's down a lot of wards. Goong's still doing a ton of damage. Oh, Q just gonna split push his way to victory. Watch Whoa. gets caught out a little bit, but little there's bit. a lantern. Yeah, Pure making a play there. They did use Chaos Storm to keep Samsung at bay, so that is one ultimate out of the way that Samsung doesn't need to deal with, but it's not going to save their top turret. And wow, it's not going to stop Oku from doing a 1v2 on even Fury. Oku, this is like, this <laughs> is the scariest this. Cork you have ever seen. <laughs> Kube is Split. trying to get turrets down. This is a smart way for Samsung to play. They know how far they are in the hole, and the fact that Kube, they keep getting this winning matchup where at least Kube can start taking out towers. Yeah. Split pushing R, man. New meta. No, it's, it's good in this situation. Legitimately. 
As long as Duke just doesn't kill him once he gets out of... He might. Oh, OQ just killing people. That was a, in a, about a 1v4 there, I guess you could say. Yep, just QSSing yeah. the Annie stun, killing the support, and now Duke on a rampage. Oh Kube has no more Hex Drinker. Yeah, he's got his flash, but it's not going to get him too far away. Can he get enough slows down to escape here? Duke gets close enough. Where's the Twisted Advance cooldown? Doesn't quite get it in time. And Najin just going to go ahead and start Baron. Eve is right there with pure running interference. Flash play on the crown. Crown tries to flash right to the box. Gets out for now. They're still going to kill Fury and turn right back onto that Baron, I would imagine. Oh, watch recalling. A little bit low health, so that may be dangerous. True. Yep. But Duke is able to recall right now. Watch can get right back in the pit with the Void Rush. So Baron incoming. Here comes the TP. Yep. Uh, Duke's just going to wait on this to see if they can bait anybody else. Great shot calling again. Duke can teleport to the tunnel on the outside of the pit right now. He's got a lot of good options. Again, like, just so crisp, too. I mean, you're ready to flash play to start that one off. And Everybody just jumps right on him, and there's the Baron for Najini Empire now, yep. as if they didn't have enough of a lead already. Yep, and Duke wanders into the bottom lane, but the wave already pushing their side wave control, looking strong for Najin, so they can immediately start to use this Baron. Yeah, just need to push up mid a little bit, but even here is strong enough to do that. So I am so you're... confused, Doa. <laughs> I don't know. I, see, I'm not confused by Najin anymore. You know why? Because I just, you know how you just go into this meditative trance sometimes, you know? It's, you just clear your mind completely, and you're just like, what will be, will be. And whatever Najin does, that is what they were meant to do. <laughs> you know? Whether it's look absolutely terrible, like the worst team in the entire league, or potentially the best team in the entire league. Everything is right. Najin can do nothing wrong. They can only do what they were meant to do. Oh, OQ. Crown, trying to get behind him. There's Dodging the hook. away. That's a lot of damage from Goon coming in. They get one already. There goes Fury. Double kill for Goon. He's going crazy now. Triple kill. Will he get the quadra? No. OQ steals it away. And Goon does go down to Kuve in the end, but that will be at least an inhibitor. That may just be the game right there. Uh, maybe. We'll see how fast maybe. they can move through, through this. There's not a lot of wave clear with Kuve right there. Yeah, that's true. They did lose Goon as well, too, but 30 second death timers. Luna's going to be up fairly soon. Oku Holy just decides to kill cow. Kuve, because why not? Because why not? He's Corky. He's Corky Death Machine. This is the most fun game I've seen from OQ. <laughs> No kidding. <laughs> I didn't think he could go full OQ on uh, on Corky, but apparently I was wrong. That's going to be two inhibitors now, and they're just going to back off safely. And and I like this a lot. They could have tried to end the game, well, they but they played very safely instead. Go back. Perfect. You still yeah. have Empowered Recall. You've got another Dragon in 30 seconds right now. Take that. Make sure you can close this game. Yeah. So let's take a look at this replay again, because it was impressive. Now. They have to try and make a play, so Crown just oh, gets hooked right geez. there, but that amount of burst damage is insane. Double kill instantly for Goob. And why not dive this at this point? Goob's going to tank the turret, maybe a little bit sloppy right there, gets killed by a Gnarled, but doesn't really matter. That is just how far ahead Goong is right now. Yeah, if you're a mid laner and you get three kills and then die, it's like, well, what more does your team really want you to do at that point? So a desperate defense with the Azir turret, it's just not going to oh, be enough. Oh, here we go. Emperor's Divide used, but the knockup still comes through on some of the Samsung members. Luna drops the Tibbers for the disengage, but... You know don't. things are going badly when you have to use Tibbers for that kind of disengage. Yep, pretty much. You're like, well, that Tibbers caused us to not immediately die, and that's the only benefit. Side wave control there for Najin, too. Yep. This team has played a very clean game. Extremely good. We're going to see everything closed out. Looks like in the mid-30s as far as minutes go, which is uh, about as fast as you can do it these days. I like what Naja did too. I talked about the Dragon, but they had already set up this massive minion wave at the top lane, push down mid, immediately rotate top, take down that third inhibitor. It's an even better play than taking that Dragon. Yeah, I mean, you can always go back to that Dragon any time, but this is just the best opportunity to take this inhibitor. Tibbers just looks on sadly, and then finally just gives up on life. <laughs> And Najin, they can kind of mill about. This is one of those games where OQ's going to be like, no, guys, let's not end it. I just want more kills. Oh, I hope not. Well, Watch goes back. Void Rush right there. No surprise. Just topping up on his HP. And here we go. Waiting for that big minion wave. And Najin going after the Nexus for us now. They grab Kube. Kube just with no tankiness at all to speak of. Yet another kill for OQ. Like I said, he wanted more, you know? There goes Nexus turret number one. 
Fury caught even though he dodges that death sentence. Ember Divide pushes, <laughs> watch into the into the fountain. But that's gonna be the end of the game anyway. Goon with another smooth double kill. Make that a triple kill. That is it. Now Jan Fire. Oh Q geez. Oh, okay. He didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> he tried. He tried really hard at the end, but uh, Najin takes a very, very smooth game. OQ 11, 0, and 6 on that Corky. Gee, I wonder who the MVP is going to be. Well, I mean, Watch played really well, too, to his credit. But in this game, I, this is the third game in a row where it hasn't even been remotely close. Nope. Najin crushes the early game, and then clean closure. 33 minutes, they get all the objectives necessary and they play very well, very measured, calculated, aggressive play. When you see them diving, they know where the members of Samsung are on the map, they have a plan. And why is Najin all of a sudden this coordinated? It is baffling. It's this time of the year again. It's <laughs> summer, man, <laughs> Najin, I think, today. And an Alistar ban is how they're going to start things off. And there is the Yasuo ban yet again, even on the blue side for Najin. Uh, Gung has never been a good Yasuo player, it has to be said. He tried last year back when Yasuo was all the rage and players like Pawn and uh, Dade and Rookie, yeah. who are now all in China, uh, were playing him and looking really dominant on that champion, but his always looked pretty bad. A Rek'Sai taken immediately by Samsung, and after the way the last game went, I think it's probably a good idea to keep that one away from Watch. And the Gragas ban, so this is the first game kind of this week that we've seen heavily into jungle bands. It's been kind of going the other way. Well, there's only one, but watch. Uh, it's a big one. Watch doesn't play Evelyn well into the rec side, so I kind of wonder what he's going to do. Instead, they're going to take Victor and Sivir. They want to play aggressively. They want to get the damage down and keep up the dives. Yeah. And so with this Rek'Sai off the table, what are you looking for in a jungler from Najin at this point? What do you go for? I want Watch to play Lee Sin, honestly. I was kind of thinking the same thing. It's got the same playmaking ability that uh, you get more, more or less from a Rek'Sai. I don't think Eve really helps you that much. You can't really do what you did last game with an Evelyn. You know what? I've been what? casting League in Korea for three years, and that is the first time I have ever said I want Watch to play Lee Sin. <laughs> I yeah. am 100% sure of yeah. that statement because I used to really dislike him playing Lee Sin back when he was on Sword. But I think that if they want to go for a similar style of game, and I have been not impressed with his ability to play Evelyn when there's a Rek'Sai on the other team. Scary. That just, it makes it even weirder, the situation that we're in right now with Najin being so good. They're making you say things like that. What about the Elise? Um, we seen early? it, we saw it on 513 in the LCS regions. Uh, it's definitely strong on 514. Watch used to play a ton of Elise too. It's not like this champion is new to him at all. I think it's fine on 513. I don't think it's a top tier jungler yet, but I think it is in a playable state and maybe you'll go for this. I think it would it would provide a lot of the uh, the same early game pressure at great. Wow, nice. The Elise. A preview of next week, no doubt. Yeah, probably. And the Braum picked up for Pure as well too. Braum, of course, has been quite high priority lately and still has a playmaking potential for our Game 1 MVP. And this seems pretty reasonable. Kogma, Azir, it's a pretty good team that uh, Samsung has put together. I, I mean, very standard. Kogma yeah. was banned in the last game. We know that Samsung puts a heavy priority on this pick as well as the Azir. And the fact that they're getting them so late in the draft is curious. Now, the Kogma into the Sivir matchup, not a great, la great lane matchup, uh, especially when you don't have kill pressure with your support like you would with something like an Annie alongside the Sivir onto the Kog'Maw. So I think that Samsung's going to be feeling very comfortable, but I thought that last game and it was just a nightmare. Now playing Olaf into Azir, not great, I will say. Uh, I think playing the Rumble into it much better. I mean, Olaf is great for teleporting and then running down a Kog'Maw, I suppose. Yeah, good against Kog'Maw, but again, you have the problem with when the Azir wall stops. That's one of the few things that Olaf can't go through. Yeah. So maybe not the best pick here. Rumble, on the other hand, will be able to deal damage to the back line, regardless of whether he can walk through the Azir wall or not. Uh, Duke's going to have to be a little bit better on uh, his teleports, though, to pull Rumble off. Yep. Gonna go for it anyway? He will, because now he can't actually stop the TP. Yep, so now he's gotta do it. Uh-oh. 
Not the biggest risk. No, I mean, but he played uh, TP on the, his Olaf last week against Ku really, really well. So let's we'll see if that is a that was a one-off or whether that train can continue here. And that is going to be something that we will be seeing from him a little bit more consistently. Oh, we'll see. I'm excited to see what Watch can do on this Elise because it's a champion that Samsung, you know, may not have been practicing against too much. It's the first time we've seen it in Korea in a very, very long time. Watch is an old hand at this champ too, so you'd think he'd be able to make the plays. You you think he would, but it's been a long time. This is the yeah. first Elise pick we have seen this season in Korea. So I am intrigued, especially like I said, because we're not on the patch where Elise is really strong yet. So we'll keep an eye on it, see how Watch can do on his old favorite. Definitely a lot of kill pressure across the lanes with that Elise pick. And we'll see if they can actually pull off an impressive victory for their fourth game in a row. That's right. Samsung really wants to tie this up, and they've got a, a good composition to try to do that with. Fury on that very comfortable Kog'Maw pick for him. Crown, of course, no slouch on the Azir, and then just a very safe rest of the game. We'll see if it's enough. Najin, again, going for this 2-0. So big going into playoffs. Can they do it? Let's get in the game and find out. <laughs> and welcome once again to Summoner's Rift. Najin EM Fire. <laughs> versus <laughs> Samsung Galaxy. <laughs> that was the most pathetic <laughs> crowd cheer I've heard after such a big like warm up. The guy was like, one, two, three, and the fans like, Samsung fighting. <laughs> <laughs> the guy, maybe he just got here. Maybe that dude that counted one, two, three, like didn't see the last game or something. Wow, that would, that really just deflated the Samsung audience that it last did. game. <laughs> wow, poor Samsung. Wow. And Oq on Corky makes people he's, cry. He's crying because he wasn't MVP. Well, Pure, Pure was MVP, though. No, it was Oq on the right-hand side. Oh, it was? Yeah, it said Oq. Sure? Oh. Yes, I am. So it looked like <laughs> Oq in, in the Corky plane. I think maybe it was more like uh, Pure was crying because Oq is off to die yet again. You know? It's like, I know you're 10 kills ahead, but stop doing that. Well, uh, it said Assassin Carry on the uh, sign there. Nice. Yep. Well, um, I think one of the biggest surprises here from Najin is Goong. I mean, he just crushed Crown in that last game. He had some help, but after that, he was making 1v1 out plays yeah. um, and not dying to any follow-up ganks either. So Goong is a really interesting player to me, Doa, because, I mean, last spring, when Goong was on fire, he was incredible. Mm. And he's been so streaky. And it's not that he's streaky from game to game. He's streaky in that he will get like a month or two of absolutely amazing play. And then he just falls off to being sort of on the lower end of average. And then he comes back again. So I'm wondering if he's gonna keep on showing this level of dominance because it's not that Crown has, Crown has been a very stable player for Samsung. Mm. It's not like, he has a history of just getting outplayed like that. He's not a flashy player himself, but he certainly doesn't get wrecked. I think the, the most encouraging thing for Goon this time around in his uh, recent resurgence is that he's been doing it on a wider variety of types of champions, which is something we hadn't really seen as much in the past, I feel like, from Goon. Yeah, nice stun activation there from Cure. And yes, I think you're absolutely right. Um, just having some more breadth wow. to his champion pool. What Jeez, is going this, on? This is Oki and Pure. There's the exhaust. Fury could be in a little bit of trouble. They don't want to push too far forward because they don't know where Eve is, but that's a lot of damage. You know, if they weren't going to go any farther forward, I don't know if you really needed to use the exhaust. I think they were trying to get the flash out of Fury, but didn't end up working out. They actually don't hit level two uh, before Samsung does. Well, they were not actually killing minions. They were just yeah, firing so. shots at Fury. Very interesting, but uh, Luna and Fury, usually Wraith is the better uh, laner compared to Luna. Um, so, but Fury, yeah, taking a huge chunk right there. Both, both mini carries using their potions early. But Braum gonna be able to drop block some of that damage coming in from Kog'Maw, which is nice when you don't really have a way of trading with it. See the carry rating right there, OQ up at 534 DPM on average. Yep. 
Not too far ahead of Fury, and I think that speaks to how talented of uh, AD carry Fury really is in most games. Uh -oh. It looks like we have Eve coming in from behind. Duke could be in a little bit of trouble trying to get away on that rumble. He flashes. Is it enough? So low. There's a flash from Kube to help secure it in first blood. Does go to Eve. Duke was just a bit too far up there. Well, especially when they don't have a ward in that tri brush, it's such an easy and effective ganking path for the Rek size. So that is a nice kill early on for Samsung. And we didn't see that uh, Watch was there to really answer to that. TP coming right in for Duke. Yeah, and that's a uh, that's an odd thing to have happen to Duke too. Usually, don't see him leave himself quite as open. Well, I mean, he wasn't actually that far up the lane. I think he thought that it wasn't that dangerous. But get in there. Oh, Here we go. There's the uh, cocoon on the crown. He gets out though. Has to burn that flash to do it. Yeah, he does. Quick burn on that, but at least they get another summoner, and that was very effective in the last game. Notice that Crown is taking heal this game. Uh, part of that's just because, of course, there isn't that Maokai there in this game to stun him. But there's still other stuns. There's still the Cocoon. There's still the Gus of Blows. But I think he realized that that cleanse wasn't doing him a whole lot of favors. And when it came down to the 1v1 between him and Victor, it was pretty devastating for him to just have that cleanse because it yeah. wasn't actually helping him survive in that particular scenario. The Goong in the meanwhile has that ghost, so just being a bit more mobile on the victor. Maybe planning on making some plays? Yeah, that's because uh, there's no Annie this game where he needed the cleanse. That's right. that's the, the key difference. So yeah, having that ghost this time. No ignite though. No ignite, that is true. Well, Goong's pushed pretty far up. He could find an opportunity there, but it doesn't look like he's gonna go for it. He's gonna try to come in behind OQ and Pure. The pry bush. They don't know he's here. This could be dangerous. Okun Pure grouping up as well, too. That's a double knockup. Flash play catches Pure. OQ in a lot of trouble. There's a flash from him and Kogma. Not able to quite finish him off because of that summoner heal. Eve hits him with a parting prey seeker, but the bot lane escapes. And all summoners used uh, from Fury and Luna to try and make that work. Meanwhile, Pure keeps two of his. So there's a really huh. good opportunity for a possible turnaround here from Najin, depending on how Watch wants to gank. Now, slight gold lead from Samsung. They have made it work as a result of the kill and a slight CS lead onto the Kog'Maw, well, which is expected if you get this matchup. If you get the standard matchup with the Kog, it's much easier to farm. OQ now has to walk all the way back, not even healing to full right here. Instead, choosing just to walk forward. He doesn't want to miss any of that CS. Yeah, I mean, he'll be able to slowly regenerate health if he just kind of farms safely under turret. So it's not the biggest worry. Meanwhile, down in mid lane, maybe a play coming in here from OQ and Pure, or from uh, Watch and Pure, rather. Gravity Field, Crown, a little bit held up. And there we go, Chaos Storm comes down, Watch. Oh, he can't quite get to him because of the minions. That was just a bit of an awkward timing with the wave coming in like that. They did force the Summoner heal, though. Parting death sentence from Luna. He's just going to keep that lane pushed up, I guess. That's something he's been good at you know, so far in this series. Samsung holding oh, on though, Here in a we lot go. of trouble going for that ward, and it was bait. Eve coming in as well, too. Doing a lot of trouble. Nice Emperor's Divide from Crown. Exhaust prevents some of the damage from going through. Watch, flashing ahead, repels at the last second. Is he going to get Luna? Oh, he doesn't quite get it. He actually did. Never mind, but Eve got him. <laughs> Both people, like, dying simultaneously. It was yeah. hard to see what was going on there. He had the execute in the spider form, so he so. did actually get the kill there. And they do trade one for one. But are we going to see a possible dragon attempt right here? Goog out of mana currently. And so is Crown. But Eve just going to pop some wards into the enemy jungle. Not going to make a play onto the enemy blue buff or anything of the sort. Maybe could have done that, actually. But I'm sure still at full HP. So there, there is a risk there. So, a bit of a hilarious sequence of events in that mid lane. Looked really good initially for... Najin, but Goon got a little bit too close and had to burn both of his summoners. And again, no mana really for a follow-up, so yeah. the damage kind of wasn't there. Oh, you and Pure pushing up that lane yet again. Looks like the blue going to hand it off smoothly to Goon. And Watch, I mean, oh, I guess he was going to come in there, but Watch has been trying to make some plays. He's got one kill so far, but it's looked a little bit rusty, you know? The timings, the 
use, ability usage. We really you can tell it's been a while. Yeah, we really are, and also just at least right now. She definitely yeah. is not the strongest jungler, but this is where Watch wants to go, perhaps in preparation for the next patch. Start to get used to her in the booth again. It does make so. sense. Because she her buffs are substantial. When you're up a game too, you can kind of have the luxury to experiment a little bit, I suppose. Although, you know, every game point does matter in the playoff situation, so there is a Bit of an element of risk to it, too, for Najin. Sure. Uh, at least going to come around the side right now, just taking a look at perhaps getting in from behind. Again, no flashes for Fury or Luna, so maybe you can get something done. But no, just going to back off. Zero in the meantime, seeing what he can do around his red pit. And that's going to be about it. So no further aggression. Duke is really far pushed up, and Watch is not no there. Wards. Dangerous. Watch has to be up to cover Duke in these kind of situations. Oh, Duke's is dead. He's got his flash, but he has flash. He has I equalizer, but this really is really don't think he's making it out. Duke is is definitely up too far here. Yeah, he's unless he goes back right now, he's gonna have a lot of trouble. Watch could be there quickly, is the thing. Eva's just waiting for this. Dude, this is where he should be. He's he's really towing a fine line. And okay, he's going to get go. it out. So yeah. he basically, Kuve would have had to flash Twisted Advance to get that, and then Duke could have flashed right afterwards. So that was the appropriate distance with Watch not being in the top side to actually do anything about this. Well, Watch is here now. Uh, just going to back off, though. I think they understand the potential for a gank. Yeah. He's playing it safe. And they do see Kuve invading as well, too, and he's not going to really do that unless he gives a round. Watch could be in a lot of trouble here, actually. Yep, there's the knockup, there's a twist advance. Repels away, comes right back down. Equalizer used for Duke. Doesn't save his jungler, though. But can they get Victor in here is going to be the I question. Wonder. Goong has got the inside track here. I think Duke went up a little bit too close, a little bit too fast, but Goong is getting there. Duke turns around. And Goon's not going to quite get there in time. Zoned out by Crown. Meanwhile, Pure coming in. Looks like they're going to pop that Cinderella to go for it. Nice play from Luna, though, to prevent the engage from Oku. There's the flash. Exhaust onto Oku. They can't quite get the kill, though. Fury is still very, very low. Yeah, really risky to try for that all in. Again, you have a Braum, which obviously is nice, but you have to stack up those suns. And the all in is just significantly less powerful than if you have something like an Annie. So they try and make it work, but it just doesn't. They also don't have Ignite, they have Exhaust, which means they can't burn somebody down quite as quickly. That was a really good play from Samsung, though. I like how when they saw Elise up there, instead of trying to dive, they just went onto the Elise instead. They played deep with Kuve and watched and respect the fact that the enemy jungler could have been there, and they he just thought he was safe going to do those Gromps. Yeah. A lot of members from Najin coming down now to the bot lane, looking for possibly a dive or at least a turret that they can transition into a dragon. Yeah, I just want to zone out right now. Yeah. Well, it could be a 4v2. This is not the worst dive to take. Yeah, Lunin Fury coming pretty far up. That turret's about to go down. Pure gets flayed in, hops back to a minion, and are they going to go for it here? Watch throws a cocoon, he catches Luna. No flash for Luna right now. They have to be careful, but they can't push too far up. No, they don't have information about the enemy jungler. They yeah. don't have wards and try brush, so dangerous to move any further on that. Still no TPs in these little skirmishes, strangely enough. Yeah. This game has been much closer than the last one. Yeah, but the fact that Najin is ahead while still being two kills behind is a bit worrisome. Yeah. Thanks to the tower that they managed to get, and Goog has been, had his tower chucked out a bit, so it's a bit of an improvement there. But Najin now trying to get the wards down to set up for a dragon. Well, Got to be careful, though, Pierre. Finds even Luna in his own jungle, and so no more wards for him for the moment. Now, Samsung does have a good position right now. They're going to be there quite a bit sooner. Considering that Azir's already there pushing and the Elise isn't quite at the objective yet. OQ can't walk up onto Fury right now. And Samsung has a lot of nice wards around the Dragon Pit as well, too. So they can kind of keep an eye on what's going on in Najin's lower jungle. Get the ward. And who's going to actually go for this? This first Dragon. 
Yeah, I don't think anybody is going to go for it yet. Nobody wants to commit when it's a bit unclear who would win. Uh, Samsung also isn't in their first item power spike yet. They want the Trinity Force done. And Kuve probably needs to get his Righteous Glory done too. So I think it's smart for Samsung just to hold off for a little while longer. Don't want to be fighting in that particular situation, especially because Duke is actually going to be stronger than the Maokai before the Righteous Glory is completed. Yeah, Samsung this game is looking much less desperate. You know, they're looking much more calm, much more collected, and that's making it tougher for Najin to get any crazy kill snowballs rolling. Yeah, that said, Najin is in a good place to do the Dragon, thanks to Rumble just having a little bit of magic penetration, not being quite so item dependent. The crown being poked out really hard, too, by doing there. That certainly helps yep. make the Dragon a bit easier. Certainly does, so maybe they'll go for it. Nope, just going to back off. I think OQ and the rest of Najin should really seriously think about this Dragon right now, because they're not going to get a better opportunity in the mid game, more than likely. Yeah, it's kind of looking that way. Yeah, they, there's a massive backing right now. Definitely could just go for the drag. But do they have that information, though? Yeah, they should. And they have the bottom tier one turret down now. It's not going to go for it. I'm, I'm surprised. There definitely was a dragon timer right there from Najin. Yeah. They well. may have been a little bit nervous, but Samsung had already fallen back to the red buff and taken that before actually recalling. So I suppose that Najin may have thought that they had just recalled instantly and they would have been reappearing in the lane about that time. I mean, going from hyper-aggressive, hyper-decisive to kind of the opposite of this game. It hasn't worked out too well yet. I like it when Najin is aggressive. I feel like that's when they make their best decisions, you know? Yeah. And you might as well try it right there. You can always back off. You don't have to commit too heavily to a dragon. Well, OQ just going for the Avarice Blade next, so really delaying his power spike right now. And well, looks a lot we like what we saw last game from Fury. Yep, that, they're going to try and take over this Dragon Pit at the moment. They know Elise is in top thanks to the sapling in the river. They're going to start it. Wow. And so can Najin do anything to stop this, or are they going to give the first Dragon to game two over to Samsung after, not, after denying all of them in game number one? Here's the teleport coming down. Duke trying to make a play here. Dragon very, very low, but nobody's there to help. Eve, there's the equalizer, traps Luna and Fury. Dragon still very low, Goon comes in, Dragon taken, but they do lose Eve, and they're gonna lose more than that. Two kills come in for Najin. So they got the Dragon, and now they're gonna lose more. Kuve in a little bit of trouble. Watch, waiting for that cooldown on the Cocoon. Crown comes in, gets caught, walked up a little bit too close, got away with the Sand Soldier, but Najin chasing, and there's the Emperor's Divide. They get the ult. And will Najin just transfer right into this mid lane for the turret? Doesn't look like it. Well, they are. Yeah, oh, actually, they are. Yeah, they are. Uh, now, the Azir is still relatively high HP, so it will be hard for them to actually take that down. But they can keep pushing up these waves, and they pick up a couple of kills to punish Samsung for that objective. And they make it work. And they split up the team nicely. So Goom, basically, the way they skirmish that, Goong is in the pit, just 1v1ing the jungler, seeing maybe if he could get him before the dragon goes down and take the dragon after that. But they send everybody else to make sure that Fury can't get in that fight. Glacial Fisher is used, Equalizer is used on the outside, and there's really not a chance for Fury or Luna to do much of anything right there as they are split off from the jungler. That could have easily been two kills and a dragon for Najin, yeah. but Eve lived long enough to make that not happen. So Samsung not really grouped on that objective, and the fact that Goom got into the pit like that made it pretty dicey for them. It definitely did. The F Sword picked up by OQ now, so he's going to be doing a little bit more damage anyway. Just sitting there defending that turret in bot lane for now. But Najin looking a little bit shaky early on in game number two. But, I mean, they're still looking they're still looking fine. It's not really they they made the correct call in that team fight for sure. So they're just not dominating lane quite as hard as they did. I think the big mistake was really watch just uh Oh, oh wow. Crown tries to make a play. There's the Emperor's Divide. Watch right there to protect his mid laner though. Oh, but maybe not enough. Cocoon misses, Watch repels right away. Pure comes in to throw in that Q. Now Watch is getting away, so they look like they managed to save Goong at least. Yeah, and Samsung couldn't go any further because Kogma was in base and OQ was walking up river, so it would have been a 4v3 at the end. Nice attempt by Crown though, a good all-in onto the victor. 
Yep. Get some tower damage down. OQ now here just to clear out waves of the Boomerang Blade. Mid lane turned a lot of trouble. Pierce blocked some of that damage, but he can't block all of it. Oh, there's no wave Whoa. there. Meanwhile, Duke is just going to try and go in onto OQ. Duke still has his ult. Yep. Could use that. Luna coming in behind Duke, though. Yeah, they know he's here. They're pinging him. Yeah, could be trouble. Trying to get away, and there's a lantern brought in. He's going to have to flash. Swiss Advance comes in. Duke in a lot of trouble. There's the flash. He actually gets away. And what is the follow uh -oh. going to be? Watch it pure here. Yeah, Najin coming up right now. The sapling will get a bit of a slow, but there's Glacial Fissure. Gets the knockup at the very max range onto Kube. Kube turns around. Can he kill Duke? No. Can't quite do it. And OQ just dives the turret. Watch comes in for the <laughs> final blow onto Kube. I love how Najin is finding these ways to dive towers safely. Yeah, wow, Eve trying to make a plan to Goom here in the mid lane. He's alone against Crown as well. The 1v2, Emperor's Divide completely misses because of the flash, and Goom lives to fight another day. Yeah, and they're going to get a tower too. Now, will this mid lane turret go down? Looks like it Definitely. will. Crown is there, and Goom is scared. Goom playing too far forward when there are four people on his team diving a tower at the top side. Just needed to stay back and wave clear and not play risky. They could lose two towers for this play. They will. Well, it's like they will just yeah, they barely, will. yeah. So Najin really not making the best trade. No, all they got out of that was a killer two and then an even standing in turrets. They're going to need a bit more than that. They also lack that first dragon too, so it's, uh, it's going to be slightly harder, but they can still certainly come back and win this pretty hard. Yeah, they could have traded that a kill and one for one probably, but uh, Goon just got caught out in mid. Yeah. So a bit of a misplay in terms of the communication and where the jungler could be in that situation because clearly wasn't in the top lane, so Goon needed just to be a wave clear machine, not worry too much about trying to play aggressively and just save the mid turret, so they ended up with a preferable trade instead. The bottom turret goes down to the Kog'Maw, and we end up with a situation that was quite advantageous to Samsung. Yeah, looking much, much better in game number two than we saw in game number one. Hard to believe, but wow, the next dragon's already coming up. It seems like it just happened. But one minute until that. And we'll see if Najin can contest it. Right now, Samsung the one with all the vision in the jungle. Firing out some cues there, right into the brush. And here we go. Looks like we are going to see a fight here. Najin oh. wants to commit to this. They Watch really wanted to kill that tunnel. Tried to prevent Eve from coming in quickly. Good vision for Samsung. And Najin has immense wave clear. And yeah, they may just go for this mid lane turret just to try to pull Samsung back. But now they're turning onto that dragon. All five members moving into the river. They grab it. And Watch gets grabbed as well, too. Good damage onto Watch there. Yeah, really good. That could be trouble with the dragon coming up. If they get control of the crab. So how much does Samsung want to commit to this dragon? It's like it's been a very preemptive dragon vision fight. Looks like going back to Samsung about 20 seconds beforehand. So Najin. Going to initiate some recalls right now. Yeah. Cure has the mobility boots, so that will not be an issue for getting back in time. Now, release does not. Watch goes back, picks up the Aegis of the Legion. That's going to be really nice. Definitely. Oh, they grab Duke. Is there any sort of follow up? Well, the follow up is damage. Quite a bit of damage, getting a little bit of red buff burn there. Kuve split pushing right now. Duke not in the top side, able to There's that. Equalizer goes down. Crown jumps off of it, though. Yeah. And Teleport coming in. Is this going to be a play for Samsung? Kuve locked up immediately, and he's getting solo so fast. Still makes it to the team for Big Arcane Smash before it goes down. Eve trying to mix it up as well, but Goong starting to make plays here. Watch gets out. Samsung still in the chase. Fury with a kill there, and Watch in big trouble. Takes an ult. There's the summoner heal from OQ to get him away, but that's a kill on each side. In fact, that went better for Samsung, and they should be able to claim dragon number two. Yep, they could just fall right back to the dragon. It looked kind of disastrous at the beginning as Kube was just isolated on the side, but they used so much of their CC in that choke point. Probably would have been better not to use the gravity field right there, but instead to put it out to zone the rest of the team off because they have concussive blows. They've got the cocoon. They should have enough lockdown already for the Maokai, and just stopping the rest of the engage was more important. Kill the Maokai, so watch this. 
I mean, normally putting Gravity Field down here is a good idea, but now they've got nothing, and Luna's just able to walk up for free. Imagine the Gravity Field on the other side instead. Would have made a very big difference, I think, in this team fight. It certainly seems that way. So instead, uh, their flank just gets attacked by the rest of Samsung, and they're not able to really do much about it. So in spite of all that, Najin's still with a slight gold lead. Yep, for now. And they're still even on turrets. And it's really third and fourth dragon where you start to get very nervous about these dragon stacks. One and two, not the biggest deal. Still, you have to say, Samsung's composition has the better late game scaling. I mean, we're talking about Azir, Kog'Maw, and Maokai here. That is true. But do Samsung have the better late game skirmishing? And I think the answer there is definitely no. So if it stays even, you'd think Najin would still have a little bit of an edge in teamfights just out of sheer mechanics. Yeah, and Elise too, always a champion that you can set up a lot of these picks with. That exactly. is very dangerous, long duration stun. And when you couple Ooh. that with uh, Sivir and Victor burst. Yep, uh-oh. Duke, Duke teleports in. in behind. Does he have the equalizer? He does. Nice equalizer, slows down a lot of members of Samsung. Huge play by Crowd. Really nice catch on the Goong. And Najin has to back off. Goong was just kind of on his own, and Samsung just turned onto him. They're still chasing Watch and Duke here. Duke flashes. There's a nice double knockup from Eve. Watch repels. But he's not going to be able to repel Samsung as he dives in the back line and dies immediately. And now Najin trying to turn it around. Pure gets grabbed, though, and OQ on the run. Pure had to hop over the wall. That was actually a really nice kill on the Fury that looked very unlikely at the start of things. Eve going to try and kill Duke with some Prey Seekers. There's the Scrap Shield. Yep. Not going to be enough. Turns around with a Harpoon. So, well. OQ actually picking up the kill onto Fury was huge. They decided to re-engage after the concussive blows landed onto Fury, and we saw the repel come in from Watch, and then OQ just fearlessly walked forward. He knew there wasn't an Emperor's Divide at that point to stop him from getting a bunch of ricochet autos off. Now they can lose their top lane turret for it. Najin gradually getting pushed back across the map here. Yep. Crown's Azir has been so good this game, too. He, he has, only has four assists, but man, he's been making plays. Yeah, he has. And he turned that that engagement right on its head. Goon thought he could get in there and deal enough damage to just kill the back line, but Crown really made a big play to stop him after the equalizer hit. Yeah. And now Samsung thinking about this Baron, but it would be a little bit risky. They have nice wards, but you can't do that when Najin's up. You cannot do that right now. You get shredded by Baron with your MR, and Victor and Rumble will absolutely 100% own you. So it would be very foolish as long as Najin is in some sort of situation where they can get Victor or Rumble there. And you can see they're just pruning the wave, so they're yeah. trying to get a slow push rolling. Oh, no, not enough, actually, so we'll push back to the turret but it won't be an overwhelming number of minions. So let's take it, let's watch this bottom wave right now oh, from Najin. Pure. Oh, oh, he failed his ward. Ugh. Oh, he didn't want to get close. He's scared, he's scared of Thresh. Yeah, who isn't? Oh, Gravity Field locks up Luna, and that's oh. a nice pick. Good equalizer, that's gonna secure the kill. Great, man, great Gravity Field from Goon. What? Presence of mind to be like, well, also, now you're dead. Also, Pure should not have been there. Yeah. Uh, there's so much CC that can be chained together. Now, this wave is going to be turned around eventually. Uh, Duke going to go for it. I thought this might be just left there to slow push. Uh, Duke does not have teleport right now, so they need to be a little bit careful. I mean, yeah, Samsung doesn't have Luna at the moment, but they can still be a bit threatening. Looks like they won't be, though. It's a good time to push this, this wave, too, with Dragon looming here in a minute and a half. And it's coming right up. And Eve wants to take the grab well in advance of that next dragon. Of course, stacking up those dragons is an excellent win condition for them right now. Goom trying just to take the Scuttle Crab on the top side so that if they play for the dragon, there's not going to be any shenanigans that cause Samsung to get a Baron. Yeah. That was a mighty battle between Goom and the Scuttle Crab, but in the end, Victor prevailed. So this is a big test for Najin. Uh, they definitely have the late, later, weaker late game, rather. And they haven't been in this this position in a while, which is to say, even in a game, but maybe at a slight disadvantage due uh -oh. to composition. Watches grab. Spiderlings abandoned him, man. Nobody wanted to take that hook, I guess. Still walking out. Here comes Kube with the home guard engage. Ooh, 
bad port. Uh, home guard attempt, yeah. yeah. Bad port from Kuve there. Not that much in terms of kill pressure. Sure, Sivir wasn't there, but you still have the victor, which is quite threatening. 30 seconds until Dragon comes, so Nautjin's going to need to book it in a hurry down to the Dragon part of the map. Yuri just pushing this wave back up again. So OQ finished his last Whisper. That is going to be actually not that important for this next fight because Kuve has no armor. So there is no armor on that team. Uh, a bit of a love tap onto Duke there. Goom will be able to finish off the mid lane turret. Another uh, nice little catch before Dragon. Yeah, obviously that helps. Another, the big item purchase here is Duke finishing his Zonia's Hourglass because now oh, finally Najin has more of a front line. He could become the flame wall with that flame spitter Zonia's combination that we see players like yeah. Shy executing really, really well. Interesting, purely magic resist on Kube. He has to be very careful as Sivir. Yep. All right. Is it Najin time? You know, I feel like... Ooh, Samsung has no wards on Baron, so... Yeah, it's a bit risky. Najin can definitely just go take Baron during this dragon attempt. That's really, really risky. Okay, so they're doing the smart thing. They're just gonna have Fury solo it along, well, duo it with Eve, rather. Nice dragon play there from Samsung. Very well executed. Samsung is maybe not a pushover, too. They have the right execution in this game. Yeah. And it's not that Najin's been playing really badly this game either. It's just been a very close game. Well, Najin, they're not playing for the 5v5 right now. They want to find the picks, it would seem. Yeah. And the, 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 we still are, as well, in a little bit of that situation where, as the, the veteran team in Najin, you can kind of wait for Samsung to make a mistake, too, because they will be the team more likely to do that the longer the game goes. Yeah, they need to get their wave clear around the backside of the turret now if they don't want to lose it. Yep. Najin trying to defend this tier two in mid. For now, Goom looking to come in with the flank on the victor. Yeah, he also has to clear up the top wave though. Side wave pressure yeah. in favor of Samsung. So they may just go ahead and get this tier two I while Goom is up there. As soon as they see Goom, I think they're gonna move right in or not. Uh, there's no wave. That was actually well-timed by Goom. Yeah, yeah, Very well-timed by Goom. So he used uh, the wave spawning yep. to use... Uh-oh, Watch got grabbed. Immediately the Brawl Belt goes down. Fury zoned out by Goon right away, but Kanajan turned this one around. Equalizer went down, did a little bit, did a lot actually to Samsung. Can they chase? Duke slowed right before he was going to get a lot of flame spitter damage in. Fury at about half health has to back off. They're going to take that Azir turret. Man, are they lucky that turret was there. Wow, that was almost disastrous yeah. for Samsung. Fury did not very much damage in that fight because Goon came in from the flank and hit him with the gravity field and the Chaos Storm immediately, so he was sent on the run. And Duke and Okio were just doing a huge amount of damage to that front line and very little in return from Samsung. So they still had the Azir wall to escape if they needed it. Uh, they did not drop the Emperor's Divide, but uh, dicey, dicey situation. They got very Man. low. I mean, Samsung, you know, made a little bit of an error there. They caught Watch, and everybody just immediately filed right in for the catch, and that grouped them up nicely for uh, Najin's counter-engage. But count catching somebody with a Thresh Hook, when there's a Braum in the game, if you try to engage in a 5v5 onto that, you're basically just going to guarantee that Braum gets in front of him and casts Glacial Fissure. Yeah. So it is a bit dangerous to follow up when it's a team fight like that off of a Thresh Hook. Yeah, and that's the type of mistakes that we were just talking about. You know, that's the that's the opportunity that Najin's looking for. And they're actually pushing back across the map quite nicely. They didn't really get any kills out of it, but they got a lot of map presence back. Got some time to clear wards, put down some wards. So they've managed to kind of wrestle things back to even here as far as the map control goes, but yeah, Najin, still in a lot of trouble. Najin still with that slight gold lead, too. They're not out of it. They definitely could use more of a gold lead compared to Samsung just compositionally. Yeah. They want to have a more comfortable win, but it's not out of the question, just playing from that slight disadvantage. The real thing is the Dragons. I mean, if Samsung gets Dragon number four, that is going to be terrible. It's real bad. Najin. Yeah. So they've got Kube in this bottom lane, and he's going to have his teleport soon. Okay, just recalling now just to stay safe. Makes sense. He wants to be near his team. And Najin can push up mid, and I guess they're not going to rotate into the 
lower part of the map to get back a bit more vision. There's a lot of wards for Samsung. Samsung's been doing a very good job warding this game. Yes, they have. Uh, definitely, that's been a big part of their dragon play, has been very clean warding. Samsung bouncing back nicely after getting trounced in the vision game in the yeah. last game. Najin staying very widely spaced. And come in with that concave. And are they going to find an opportunity here? You can see the vision from Samsung. They don't have a ton of it. Oh, and Watch is just going to repel over to the Raptors, it looks like. Yeah, Watch gets a Raptor buff that will take care of one ward. Yeah. Samsung's still a little bit slow when it comes to getting actual vision onto the Baron. And they're going to have to deal with this top wave soon. And the bottom wave eventually. Yeah. They're trying to make a play right now, but they're oh, not going to be able to do it. That was risky. not a good TP. Teleport canceled by Duke. They're going to activate that Sivir ultimate. Goom gets jumped on. Oh, my. oh, that's a lot of damage. And this is what Naja may have been looking for. Crown a little bit on the outside of the fight. That's a double kill now for Duke. You're going down as well. Crown in a little trouble. Finally gets taken out by OQ. It's such a brawl, but it looks like Najin is barely able to win it. In the end, a double kill for OQ. We'll see if he picks up the triple. Does not. That one goes to Duke, and they are going to turn right around for this Baron. Samsung massively overcommitted to that. Once you, once you miss your abilities like that, when we saw them try and just force the engage, you, if you lose all of your engage tools, if your TP Righteous Glory doesn't work, it's so easy for Najin. Because remember, OQ didn't even use on the hunt to escape that. Yeah. Which meant as soon as their engage was gone, OQ just flips on his ultimate. Duke is already walking there. He gets an, a very good equalizer into a choke point. And you're just, that's it. That's it for you. Just watch this. So right here, you see the TP is actually canceled by Duke. That was a very smart TP cancel. Yep. So look at this. Here's the turnaround. You get crushed in the choke point. Watch is there behind you. Get some CC down. Fury dies instantly to Duke because he's all separated on the side of the fight. And OQ is easily able to kill the Azir as a lot of that damage went down onto the victor instead. But that was great poise by Najin. Holding the Sivir ult that long was very, very good. You know, that said, fourth dragon being taken right now by Samsung. Najin needs to do this again immediately if they want to stop it. Fourth dragon taken by Samsung, but will they lose a team fight afterwards? Fury a little bit caught out. You're in trouble. There goes Duke That's in the back so line. Cute. Pop the Zonius. Doesn't kill Fury, though. OQ trying to make plays. Gets one on the crown now, and they're going to chase. There's two for OQ. Got the double kill. Eve going over the Baron pit, or Dragon pit, rather. Fury made it out of that fight, and that fourth dragon could be trouble for Najin later, but they're starting to win the team fights pretty handily. Well, Fury got hit by a cocoon yeah. at the start of that, so he unfortunately took the brunt of that damage and couldn't contribute any of his own because he just had to run from the burst from Victor. All right, there's another turret. Najin pushing ahead. Can they maybe get an inhibitor here? They can at least do oh, a lot yeah. of damage to objectives. They have Baron. It's a, it's a five versus three with Baron. They will get okay. at least one inhibitor here. Thanks for killing the hype. I could be like, oh, wow, they get an inhibitor, but now everybody already knows. <laughs> Ooh, they got an inhibitor. They did? Now they're going to back off. Da. Well, Samsung did the smart thing. The way they get back into this game, they have that fight there. They get the fourth dragon. And now, at the very least, maybe there's a sliver of a chance that they can get a fifth dragon. Yeah. The inhibitor is down, but it's going to be back up by the time the dragon is, so it's not so bad for them, considering the deficit they were already facing. Now, they do still have that little threat, anyway, against Najin, but with the way these last couple team fights have been going, it's uh, it's going to be tough for Samsung. Yeah, this has been, um, it's been a nice game from Najin. This yeah. and it's not as dominating as the last one, but I think if you're a Najin fan, the takeaway here is, hey, maybe they don't have to absolutely wreck their lanes to win the game. They they lost a lot of their lanes. They lost the early kill battle here, but how they've gotten back into this was through some nice team fighting, like we saw in that last one. They made the right decision, especially Duke, a player that we've been criticizing in terms of his TP usage, canceling his TP and then following up with the Sivir ult that hadn't been used was very smart. Yeah. True enough. And 
now just pushing in now with what remains of their Baron buff, which is to say nothing. Just ended. Try to do damage to this tier two turret. Walking she gets a little bit poked out. Yeah, have to be careful here. Well, Crown is still doing a, a good amount of damage. Now, here's the thing. They know there's a they need to just sweep the topside jungle for Rek'Sai tunnels right now because they're only using Rek'Sai in the bottom because they don't have port. Yeah. So as long as they know there aren't any post Rek'Sai tunnels, it's safe for them to push forward. Okay, there goes the tier two. Kaji jumps ahead. Three to, or seven to three in turrets now. Man, Eve just can't do damage to these super minions. Yeah. yeah you can really only do so much. It takes so long to clear those. So, Najin just going to back off right now. They can continue to just clear vision. Maybe they, they'll get lucky and get this red buff, but it doesn't look like it. Try to steal with the boomerang blade, not quite there. And time to recall, spend all that money you've earned. And then start to push into the top side, considering that it will be the Baron that comes up before the dragon. Actually, they're probably gonna spawn at about the same time. Well, Ajin just playing patiently, gonna try to close this one out soon. We'll see how smoothly that goes. Yeah, it's gonna take probably another Baron, realistically. Probably. Uh, they don't have the same dive potential with this composition that they had with the last one. So, it does make it a little bit harder just to crush your way through the enemy base. But they do have better, uh, I guess they have slightly better Siege. It's not really, well, kind of a toss up actually. They had the Corky last game, so I guess the Siege advantage there goes to the, the Corky. They want to fight around objectives with the Sivir and the Rumble. Uh, that's probably what we're going to see them do, and it will be approximately the same spawn for the Dragon and the Baron, but there's plenty of time, the 30 seconds, to get the Dragon and then transition into the Baron. Yeah. And Samsung's going to have to fight this Dragon. There's not there's not a choice, really. Najin already has the uh, control over that part of the map, so they can kind of set the battlefield, you know? They can prepare yeah. it in a way they want to have it. Basically, Samsung's problem is, is that Najin will instantly start the Dragon when it spawns, Yeah. which means that and they just don't have the power because of their deficit to actually just sit and wait to poke them out then try and fight them afterwards. Well, that's the thing, is that if Najin does start that dragon right away, there's no way that Samsung can really get to it without walking through a choke. Yep. It's very problematic, but Najin's playing this properly. Yeah. So. Everybody getting there in time. Duke the last to arrive. I Fashionably think, late. I think you just kind of have to hope that Eve gets a steal here from the back yeah. side of the pit. That's about well, what you're banking on. If that happens, that'll be... Pretty big. 30 seconds now, and Najin, all they need to do is just sit and wait here and make sure that Samsung doesn't outmaneuver them. Well, Samsung, maybe they can get some good poke down and force a fight before the dragon or right when the dragon spawns. Yeah. But it's going to be very close. Well, they've managed to move into the mid lane, which is really nice. Have they caught Luna here? Oh, Sivirol, they think they have. They're going to turn around. They get Luna to use the box Maybe. early. Teleport coming in. Najin's going to be all over him when he comes in. Duke gets grabbed. Has his own use early, though. OQ and Gung on the outside of the fight getting a lot of damage. And Fury still gets the first kill onto Duke now. And is that enough damage? Oh, watch goes down, too. Samsung may have this one. They certainly have the team fight, and it looks like they're going to get that fifth dragon as well. Wow, so Samsung, that oh. was exactly the same situation as before. They dropped the gravity field onto Kube instead of using it to zone. Now, they're still very strong, but a full health Rek'Sai will be coming through. Yeah. Now, Duke does have TP whenever he gets back up, but this is going to be five dragons. OQ and Goon need to be heroes here, but they can't even do it. No, Backing he doesn't have, off. Yep. He doesn't have flash. Uh, OQ was caught out in the front of that choke, so had to flash to the back. And wow. The inhibitor goes down again because the super minions weren't cleared out, but Najin looked like they panicked a bit in that team fight instead of playing things a little bit more cool. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised. I mean, like you said, they ran right onto the same situation they had before. They were all grouped up right when Maokai spawned in the middle of them from that teleport, and that uh, knockout from the arcane smash is nothing to really sneeze at. Yeah, I mean, Goong and, uh, and Oku did get into a good position, but it took some summoners to do it. Yeah, they did take a Nexus turret as well, too, just now, I believe. 
Uh, yes, they did. Yeah, it looks like they did. So they're delaying Samsung enough. Duke and Watch are back up. So all they have to do is dance around for the next couple of minutes. Samsung is going to be forced onto this Baron. They have to do it. All right. Well, they've got that five dragon buff. It's going to be tough for Najin to fight, but can they find them in the choke here? Duke coming in, pure. There's the equalizer. Goes down a little bit early. Splits up the team, though. Can Najin make this work? Watch goes in. He gets the Baron. He steals it. Duke with a nice zone. He just doesn't activate that flame spinner, though. Brownbolt comes in. Najin has to back off. They're still fighting against a five dragon. Samsung, here goes down. Emperor's Divide used. Watch in a bit of trouble. Looks like OQ gets a kill, though. Crown manages to pick one up on Watch. It's back and forth. Two on each side now. Crown jumps into the blue buff pit to try to get away. And Najin able to push them despite losing that fifth dragon. Najin just playing it patiently. Clutch, clutch Baron steal by Watch. And Goong held the Chaos Storm for so long right yeah. there. They thought it was gone. And now Najin actually able to push back into the base, get another tower. They can't commit to an inhibitor. Yeah, it's a little bit too dangerous to go up against this uh, five dragon buffed Azir and Kog'Maw, but they're going to be able to turn it around and be content that they have uh, Baron buff still on all their carries. All right, so maybe not the best equalizer right there yeah. coming in, but they still managed to get it. And watch this from Watch. So see if he gets the execute damage down. And yeah, he uh, he hit the smite at the same time as execute. He just has more burst damage than the uh, the Rek'Sai does. So he manages to time it nicely done by Watch. And then here we go, the fight going through. Now watch the Chaos Storm right there. Popped late just to zone. So he gets Luna with it. And it means that there's no follow-up possible from Samsung while the Chaos Storm is there and everybody on the inside gets hit by the Sivir. This has been a pretty exciting game, but Najin with this Baron buff as the five Dragon buff ends now o for Samsung, should o have a big edge. Oku sold his cowl for a black cleaver. <laughs> I love it. It's He's gone full Oku. Well, there's not a lot of threat to him, honestly. Uh, especially now that the McHales is there for pure, so he can cleanse any kind of thresh hooks or true. twisted advances that get onto him. So I, he can also apply so many stacks across the team with his ricochet. Yeah. And that does benefit Watch, I suppose, too. Uh, a little bit. I mean, it's a, I mean, it's obviously not a, a high amount of synergy, but He's it's showboating okay. a little bit, let's be honest. I don't know. I think it's a good item. Uh, if you can consistently get ricochet, ricochet autos in. Watch him get hit by the death sentence here. And it really depends on your positioning, though. Yeah. It, it's either valuable or entirely useless. Yeah. But the nice thing is you'll get more ricochets with the CDR, so. Oh, no, that's true. That's a good point. Well, Najin trying to make this Baron buff a uh, tool to take this inhibitor in mid lane. And his here turret, though, still going to be foiling their attempts. And I mean, it's Sivir's low range. They have a melee top laner. Yeah, the siege is not good. Yeah, and it's not a melee top laner that can just walk up to the turret and zone people out either. He's still pretty squishy. He doesn't even have a Rylize right now, going for that pure AP. Yep. Got the Void Staff. I do wonder about this blade, though. Probably or uh, this black cleaver. Probably Blade is a better item at this stage of the game, but we'll see how it, we'll see how it goes. I mean, Oku's positioning has been really good in the fights that have happened so far. He hasn't died. He's the only person in the game to not die yet. So he can certainly keep doing what he's doing and use that black cleaver to good effect, for himself anyway. Yeah, and also it does give him a bit more survivability against Burst than a Blade of the Ruined King does. True that HP, but, you know, I, I still think Blade is better here, honestly, on the Sivir. I mean, you're looking at this Rek'Sai and this Maokai in the late game. Um, sure, he's got some life steal sustain with the Bloodthirster, but now that Kube has the Thorn Mail, that is going to be at a premium. Oh, Luna. Oh, almost gets caught. Flash is used by Watch and Luna. Was actually a bit, misses. It was a bit of a misplay by Watch. He should have aimed yeah. that. He should have aimed that um, uh, cocoon better because he probably could have had that if it was at a different angle. Because the flash from Luna was actually late. Yeah. Well, Dragon in 30 now. Samsung wants to get that five Dragon buff back again. They've got that constant threat now. Can Najin stop them? 
Samsung doing a good job of staying out of the chokes, but Najin has a position over the Dragon at the moment anyway. Najin also has the benefit of Kog'Ma ults to continuously check these brushes. So Dragon coming up, Samsung looking for their second, fifth Dragon stack. Yep. We need a name like Super Dragon Buff or something that we can use. Here they come. Najin, can they Ooh. prevent this? They need it. And a first dragon for them would be a big buff, too. Oh, Kuve coming from the side. They're trying to catch Najin in the choke here. Can they do it? Equalizer goes down. Oh, who caught who? Najin doing a ton of damage initially, but is it enough? Eve backing away. There's the Emperor's Divide. Watch. Very, very chunked out. And Najin coming in. OQ has to back away. And meanwhile, Eve, very low. Duke nearly picks him off. OQ can't get closer. He can't walk into those Sand Soldiers. Looks like Najin has barely done it. Looks like they should be able to get this dragon. I don't know. They're uh, a man down. We'll uh, Kube doesn't have TP anymore, but there is oh, the... Oh, pure. Uh, it's so hard to tell. Eve is here. Here comes the TP. Duke coming back in with full HP. Yeah, I guess I spoke too soon. Duke coming in. Fury in a lot of trouble getting roasted alive. Here comes OQ. Oh, OQ gets one kill. Duke in trouble, but can OQ save the team? Pure still alive too. Goon comes back in for the kill. And Eve on the run. Now Najin has managed to turn it around enough that, like I mentioned earlier, they should be able to get this dragon. But... Duke's back again. He needs Their to, base is in trouble. Yeah, he needs to clear out the top side. That's a massive wave. Is he actually going to do it? No, he's clearing out mid instead. Wow, and I guess that gets him closer to the dragon, too. <laughs> Najin started it, but didn't finish it. Dragon's well, sitting in the mouth of the pit right now, I guess. Well, Najin doesn't have smite, so they're yeah. afraid to actually do it right now. Duke has decided... Oh, jeez. This is an interesting decision. I guess they're just going to rush the inhibs. Uh, I guess so. I mean, Crown it's actually and not Fury. Bad. Crown and Fury are still down for 30 seconds, yeah, so they can come smart. in. this is actually smart. This is actually a good call. It yeah. looks iffy, but right now, you don't have your jungler up, so you're scared. And there's only one Nexus Can through. you actually win the game I right now? I think, think you can. I think they can, yeah, because, again, there's a lot of time until the carries come up. Pure needs to be careful. Still a lot of tanking is preventing these Nexus turrets from going down. They get Kube, a kill for Duke, but they need to do this fast. They need to win it and take out this Nexus turret. They can. A double kill for OQ at the end, and that should be it. Despite the low health for Goong, he's going to die to minions, but not until the Nexus is damaged enough to do it. That is it, a 2-0 for Naj and the Empire. Came down to the wire there, but they got it. That was such a oh. good call from Najin. Props to them. Yeah. Don't screw with the 50-50 on a fifth Dragon stack. Realize that they don't have those inhibitor turrets any longer when your jungler is down and they have their two carries down, instead just go for the win. That is a very rare shot call right there, yeah. but it was a really good one. That was one of the, the rare games where like a team has not gotten a single dragon, the other team gets five, and it's just purely shot calling and skirmishing that brings you back. That was impressive stuff. That was so well done by Najin at the end. It's world's time. <laughs> I guess so. Now, this is a team that has faltered in shot calling, but that's a just think about how rare that situation.